Hi, I'm Leslie Rinchen Wangmo, and this is a tanka. A tanka is a Tibetan Buddhist form of sacred art, and it's a pictorial scroll. And one of the cool things about it is it's um, integrated into a, a, a display, a store, and transport package all in one. Um, I've been making um, tankas for several years, and what I've noticed when I um, see people at um, teachings and other events sometimes is that they don't know how to deal with this wonderfully integrated package, how to hang it, how to display the tanka best, and then how to roll it back up again to move to its next location. So I'm going to spend some time with you today explaining how to do that. So what you'll notice is that there are, when it's rolled up, there are uh, strings or cloth ties wrapped around the tanka, and they hold it rolled. Those uh, ties serve a dual purpose. I'm going to unwrap them here and actually tie them together. And you can set this on a table to do this. I'm holding it now so you can see. I tie them together and they create a uh, kind of a, a hook. I don't know. A, a, uh, they create what I use to hang it on a hook or a nail. So we're going to hang it on the wall now. Now, when you hang a tanka, normally you want to hang it higher than this, probably, because you want the, the image to be um, above your eye level so that it uh, evokes an inspiring attitude as you look up to it. How to do it. So but see I'm how I, I, I hung it on the nail, and then I'm gently letting it down as it unrolls. And now you see that it's actually covered. Under this is the picture of the... Buddha or the meditational deity, and um, the veil is covering it. And this veil originally was to um, protect um, unauthorized eyes from viewing the images. Some images are really meant to be seen only by people who have received the instructions and the empowerment to do the practice associated with that deity. And so the veil serves the purpose of, of covering it when it's not being used by people doing their practice associated with that deity. And these ribbons here, I just learned recently, um, when in a windy tent or something, these serve to kind of keep the, the veil down. When you um, expose the tanka, you can either leave the ribbons hanging in front of it for decoration, or you can move them to the back of the tanka over the slat at the top. Now, one thing I want to point out is right here at the top, there's a string that goes across the front of the tanka veil. That is not for hanging the tanka. I have seen sometimes when I've gone to Dharma teachings that this was hooked over the nail, um, and that could... Um, degrade the tongue, this um, string. This string is only meant for holding the weight of the silk drape. So now, here we go to expose the tanka itself. We're going to start from the bottom of the veil. And in my right hand, because I'm right-handed, if you're left-handed, you can do it in your left hand, we're going to fold this uh, center of the veil in pleats, sort of accordion fashion, back and forth, gathering it in your hand as you fold it up until you reach that string at the top of the tanka. And then, as I said, the purpose of this string is to hold that. So you take all these pleats that you've gathered in your hand and you push them up under the string and pull them out from the top. so that it creates a nice flourish at the top. And you can play with this. You can open this up so it looks like a blooming flower. You can move this into a semicircle like this. Or sometimes people will separate it and um, display it more separate at the top. That's your choice, how you like it, how you feel it enhances the image. This tanka, most tankas, the picture itself is a painting, and the external frame is a fabric, a brocade. This is a rarer form of tanka, which is the kind that I make, which is an applique tanka. So occasionally you will see this, where the whole picture and frame are made from fabric. Usually you'll see a painting in the center. This one is White Tara, uh, goddess of longevity and you'll see the brocade framing it. Okay, so when your 
if you've displayed the tanka for a temporary occasion or you're going to move or you need to take it somewhere, you need to take the veil back down. So we're going to pull it down from where it's hooked under that string until it drapes freely again. We're going to bring the ribbons back to the front so they hang down in front. And then we lift it off the nail. And as I said, you might have hung it higher so that it would be a level that inspires, inspira inspires inspiration. Um, <laughs> so you might need a step ladder to get it down. And then you need a friend for this part, for rolling it up. So Marianne, will you come here and help me? If you'd stand over here. And your friend will hold the top slat. There you go. Thank you. All right. Bring it down to like chest level. Very good. And hold it tight. So now I'm going to pull away so that the tanka is taut. And I'm smoothing out the drape and the ribbons. And then I start to roll. Now, as I roll, you'll notice that my hands are on the outside. Whoop, let me fix the ribbon there. This is very important. And this is especially important with a painted tanka because you don't want your hands to be gripping the canvas and the paint because you can crease and crack that and degrade the painting. So you want to always keep your hands on the fabric, the brocade borders as you roll up. And keep it taut so that it will be nice and smooth inside the roll. And when you get all the way up to the top, thank you, Marianne, mm -hmm. can you just hold this one in now? And then those wonderful straps that were used to hang the tanka on the nail will return to their, perp their second purpose of keeping the tanka rolled up. Now notice where they're sewn here, if I wrapped it here, I would be wrapping it right on top of the picture. And again, if it's a painting, that can be really dangerous. You can damage the painting. So make sure you instead stretch them out to the edge, hook them on your thumb, and wrap it around so that it's squeezing on the brocade, not on the picture itself. And tuck them under so that they'll hold. And then turn it. And my friend can hold the other end. And again, tie this one. I hope this has been helpful and um, that when you have the occasion to hang your tanka, you'll know now how to do it in the most um, respectful and beautiful way possible. Thank you so much.